Hi guys, you're here with Chelsea DeSilva, your local BCBA. I wanted to um, make a continuation video on uh, what to do about the different functions of behavior. So my last video, I talked about what to do about a um, attention maintained behavior. Uh, now, today I'm going to talk about uh, what to do about an escape maintained behavior. I think it, escape might be kind of the second um, most prevalent function of behaviors that we as behaviorists see in session. Sad to say, a lot of times our kiddos are trying to escape our presence, our demands, and, you know, typically we work on things that are challenging for them, you know, to get them used to the skills and tolerance and that sort of thing. So, uh, now, um, just to review, uh, a um, escape maintained behavior is a behavior that the kid is having to escape out of something. So, um, just to kind of recap on our explanation about the functions of behavior, you got to make sure that this behavior is for an escape function, not an attention function. So, for example, if you have a kiddo and you're having session and you work on non-preferred tasks and, you know, um, I think all of our kids are going through it right now and all of our parents are going through it, non-preferred is usually the schoolwork that they're having to do and you prevent, present your kiddo with schoolwork. All righty, Johnny, it is time to do your schoolwork and now he starts having these behaviors. Now, make sure that you're not going to label this an escape maintained behavior if you as the parent or the behavior support, um, you're standing there and you're making sure that uh, this, this schoolwork task is not leaving. So kiddo has behaviors, tantrums, or, you know, rude words or whatever the behavior is. And um, based on that, uh, is this um, schoolwork leaving or not? Is it still present as the behaviorist, as the parent? Are you right there over their shoulder? Nope, time to do it again. Nope, you gotta try again. Um, and uh, kind of like, you know, following through, or are you like, okay, I'm gonna give you a minute then. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, well, you're not gonna get your reinforcer, but I'm just gonna wait here until you're ready to do what you're supposed to do. So you gotta make sure that um, what the kid is getting out of the behavior is actually escape. And it could be a 100% escape as far as like, you know, just I'm gonna wait until you're ready. Um, or it could be a temporary escape um, as far as like a delay. and okay, well, I'm going to give you five more minutes and then you get to start. Now, once you've established that it is actually escape that's happening, what you do is you don't allow the kid to escape, you know? So how do you do that, right? Like you're not going to stand there and grab their hand and like force them to write or you're not going to hold their head and force them to think of the right answer or, you know, process the information or whatever. But what you're going to do is as much as possible, this task or whatever the thing is they're trying to escape or expecting to escape is not going to go away. So for example, if the kid now all of a sudden gets from the chair and now they're on the floor, guess what happens with schoolwork? Schoolwork does not stay on the desk or on the table because now by them being on the floor, they have gotten away from or escaped that schoolwork situation. Now, Depending on the kid, how easy they are to prompt, I would not suggest a full physical prompt. So don't go pick the kid up and put him back in the chair and shove him back up to the desk. Uh, I mean, if you're a parent, you know, um, and you know that's what your kid needs, then, you know, go ahead. Um, however, um, I don't really suggest that just because we don't want the kid to get used to, okay, well, if the person is able to or willing to physically make me, I guess I can't get out of it. Because when they do go back to school, teachers do not do that. They're not allowed to physically prompt a child unless the kid is in danger. Um, and so you're going to kind of create like this uh, expectation for the kid, like, oh, they're going to grab me and pick me up. And the one time they do it at school they realize nobody's going to put hands on them they're like oh i can totally escape so we want to really want to create a um a method that uh other professionals and individuals are going to be able to and willing to follow through so what do you do johnny's in the in the seat and you're like okay it's time to do your schoolwork," or he runs into a problem that's hard or it's the 11th minute and his tolerance is gone he flops on the floor what do you do you know what you take that assignment right down there with him 
Now, if you know, okay, this behavior is going to escalate to now he's going to rip the paper up or he's going to, you know, whatever, you may not like just put it down in front of him. You may kind of have a hold on it so that you can make sure that you're still in control of it. Um, if, if you can, ideally, you've made like 10 copies of this because you know your kid and you know, you know, they're going to rip it up or whatever. Um, but the idea is, is, is you cannot let them escape from this. So this is going to be that nag that follows around. Now, as much as possible, we want to be able to block and direct our kid to where they need to be. So if they are on the floor, we're going to get ourselves between them and the, the door so that they're not going to get up and run out, you know, and we're going to be in a position that um, physically we're able to block their uh, or kind of not restrict their movement, but block them from escaping further. So he's already on the floor. We're going to bring the schoolwork down there. He's refusing to read. We're going to be like, this word is W-H-Y. What does that say? What's that spell? You know what that spells. Okay, I'm going to help you. That spells Y. Okay, and we're going to just keep like making that situation present for them. As long as it takes, honestly, as long as it takes, um, if if we're able to. So like I've had a kid, you know, to be like, oh, you're going to keep handing me the pen. OK, I'm going to, you know, try to threaten to stab you with it. So, you know what we did? We switched to crayons, you know, we're like, OK, well, your work is going to have to be in crayons here. It's time for you to write time for you to write. And generally, once the kid realizes that you're not going anywhere, now you're just going to badger them and like, you know, really um, put the pressure on them no matter where they're at they get under the table you're scooching under the table nope it's time to do this it's four plus seven try again what is four plus seven you need to do it so now we go from like the schoolwork just being presented to them to now uh, if we have to be auditory with it because they're refusing to look or whatever now it gets over to like a little bit annoying so that we're hoping the kid is like oh my gosh, I'm not getting out of this and they keep following me and they keep saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, give in. Um, and so if the kid is removed from the place that they should be, so they ran off somewhere, um, they're on the floor, whatever, we may build up their momentum by what is four plus seven? Nope, try again. What is four plus seven? Nope, try again. That's not it. You're not answering. You can do it. Come on, what is four pl uh, plus seven? I'm going to help you. Seven, counting on. What's next? Eight. What's And so the idea is we're constantly still making that work situation present. Now, um, if we know that they're in a mood where they're going to break their crayons or they're going to try to stab us with a pencil or throw it or whatever, we may just kind of task reduce. And now it's like, okay, just tell me, just tell me what the answer is. I will write that one on there or just tell me what it is. So we're kind of building that compliance momentum. They tell us, okay, four plus seven is 11. Oops, good job. That's good. That's right. Okay, now let's go sit down and write it down so that we can get whatever. So um, remember, we're always supposed to, from our running a trial, we're always supposed to um, have a reinforcer set up. So we're going to use that uh, reminding of the reinforcer to encourage the child. And then on the other end, we got on one side encouragement. On the other side, we got, we're not getting out of this. We're not letting you out of this. We're going to be so annoying until you decide to do it. And then somewhere in the middle, we have a little bit of task reduction. You're on the floor. Okay, you don't have to write it. You're down there. I read one word. I read two words. You read the next one. But before we reinforce them, before we say, good job, reinforcer, go on your break or whatever, they need to be back to that same spot, to that same situation that they escaped from. So even if it's only one word that they get back up there and they're to the end of the sentence, but you got to be sitting down before you, you know, finish it off and get to have your break or whatever um, or time away, they really shouldn't earn a tangible for this. They should try again, sit back up here in the desk, on the chair, whatever, and try again before they earn a tangible. However, uh, this behavior, you know, is showing that they do need a break or they really want a break. And so you may task reduce, um, but do get that in compliance back in the situation, back in the spot they were supposed to be. Don't feel bad and don't worry if it takes you literally like 30 minutes to get them to do something that should have taken two minutes. OK, it may feel like um, a failure or a loss on your part as far as managing the behavior. However, what the kid is learning is even if I fight for 30 minutes, it's not going anywhere. I'm still going to have to do it. And I promise you tomorrow will be a shorter duration, shorter intensity of that escape maintained behavior. 
I hope this has been helpful to you. This is what to do about an escape maintain behavior. All right, take care guys. Bye.